With less than a week remaining and a minority government looking ever more likely, seats in the suburban 905, where the liberals and conservatives are razor close, are deep in the campaign crosshairs. So Whitby right here is our first stop, about an hour east of the uh, city of Toronto downtown. And with a quarter of commuters spending more than an hour of their day in their cars, the carbon tax here could prove to be quite decisive. Oh, it's pretty well divided here. It always has been. Carbon tax, does that mean anything for you? Other than more expensive groceries. Other than that, no. I think that it becomes one of those tools um, to garner voters' attention and, and to garner voters. As commuters head into the city, they are bombarded. Ads on the train, brochures in the station. Winning Whitby could be the key to winning the most seats. It's that close. And some are quite fine with that. Whoever gets in power, I don't want it to be a majority. Um, I think a minority government right now is more important because people need to work together. And that needs to be the main goal. As the last express train heads into Toronto, we're headed to the other side, a vast area that can expect a lot more attention in these final days to convince undecided voters. The pathway to a majority is right here in Mississauga. Six seats in play. Either the Conservatives need to grab them or the Liberals need to hold them. There are two seats in particular. One of them is right here, Mississauga Lakeshore. And this is a rematch of the 2015 race. Same candidates. Once again, there's a Liberal sign. There's a Conservative sign. Neighbors disagreeing right on the same street. It's going to happen all over the place, but it's critically important here because in that last election, those two parties were separated by just six points. Half the population here is either immigrant or first generation Canadian. And at this grocer, lots of talk and right now indecision. When will you make a decision about who to vote for? Let's see. Until the last day. Until the last day? Maybe the day before. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see first. Others have long since come to a conclusion well thought out and deeply pessimistic. Because I don't trust any of them. You don't trust any of them? No, because basically what it is, there's all these promises and then when they get to power, it's just like we don't count. You might have heard that elsewhere too. Just as you've heard voters whose minds are more than made up. I just want to tell you, I'm way for the liberal. I'm that way. I don't think anybody should have voted for Trudeau. Ever. One constituency north in Mississauga, Aaron Mills, this man is no Trudeau fan. You can't believe a word he says. So, uh, if you want to know who I'm supporting, I support Andrew Scheer. If political candidates drop by this retirement home, they haven't yet, they'd hear of pensions and, of course... Well, it's health care for me. There's such a long waiting list when you go to the hospital. They were supposed to consider taking the drugs over by yep, the Pharmacare. Pharmacare. Yeah. Next, we're heading north in the suburban 905 to the Aurora Oak Ridges Richmond Hill riding. The Conservatives long dominated in this area. That is until the last election when the Liberals managed to pick it up by the narrowest of margins, just two percentage points. But that new Liberal MP, she crossed the floor, became a Conservative, is running under that banner again. And the Liberals, they want this area back. But here too, voters aren't always, shall we say, enthusiastic. They're terrible leaners. There isn't one of them that I would vote for. And David's here with me in Burlington. Thank you for coming out here. Um, so obviously this riding, very close the last time round. Uh, the riding where I was yesterday in Milton that, that featured our, our lovely family there, also very close, although it may flip the other way to the Liberals. I mean, is that sort of part of why we are seeing so many people spend time here? Yeah, certainly the amount of time that's being spent by the leaders, the amount of money that's being spent by campaigns throughout the 905. You look at here in Burlington, three and a half percentage points separating um, the two candidates, the Liberals and the Conservatives, yep. in 2015, as you've noted. And so that creates the dynamic for where we are today. It's still a very close race, but one the Conservatives really do need to win if they're going to form any kind of government. And history is in many ways on their side. If you look provincially, they've only lost once since mm -hmm. 1943. So yeah. this, there is a strong Conservative bed here. 
The question is whether they can translate that going forward, and that is the question really throughout the 905 region on what is a very breezy night, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for suffering through yeah. with us. That's David Conwell.